So the U.S. Postal Service is launching a new effort. They're teaming up with the Department of Health and Human Services to protect the nation against a bioterror attack. Rick Leventhal is on this for us live in Philadelphia this morning. So, Rick, how will the mail carriers help in that kind of situation? Well, Martha, if you need medicine delivered to every resident of a major metropolitan area as fast as possible, who better to do it than the U.S. Postal Service? They have the equipment, uh, they certainly have the knowledge of the routes, and now they have the manpower. 1,500 volunteers in five major cities, including here in Philadelphia, where Bill Schneider was one of about 600 people to sign up for this Health and Human Services Postal Plan Initiative. In the event of a major bioterrorism attack, Bill and the other volunteers will be called into a distribution point like this one to pick up loads of antibiotics and pamphlets and then uh, arm themselves with protective gear and use a police escort to deliver the drugs to every single home within 48 hours of the incident. I think it's just an extension of, of what we do here. I mean, we, we, we serve the public. Uh, we live here. It's kind of an extended family. And if something like this goes down, people are going to need help. And who better than your letter carrier to deliver the medicine that's going to be needed? Bill is a 28-year veteran of the Postal Service, and like many of his coworkers, a military veteran. And I asked him, why you? And he said, why not? Good question, right? But this uh, whole thing may not be around for very long, right, Rick? Well, yeah, like any program, this one costs money, and the money is about to run out. In fact, at the end of this month, and the USPS and the Department of Health and Human Services asked Congress for another $5 million to fund the program for three more years. Without it, they can't expand to other cities or even maintain where they've already trained to respond to a bioterror attack. I don't see why the funding is really a consideration. I, I don't know how you can measure uh, people's uh, lives in terms of an appropriation. This is just a program that is vital to people's lives. So again, asking Congress for, for more funding, and they're worried that this government shutdown could mean an end to this particular program, Martha. Rick, thank you from Philadelphia this morning. Interesting.